government pursued a vigorous educational program. It was the first region to introduce free primary education in the Federation. January the 7th, 1955, and the Premier of the Western Region, Chief the Honorable Obafemi Obolowo, broadcasts. He announces the launching of the Free Universal Primary Education Scheme in the region, a scheme to accommodate 400,000 children in 10,000 schools. It will cost the government over four million pounds to provide the facilities, but without them, only 96,000 of the region's children could have been taught in schools like this, owned by the Ibadan District Council. It is the model for the new ones yet to be built. The headmaster admitting the children is instrumental in opening for them and for all the youngsters of the region, a new and wider future made possible by universal education. The Premier, the Minister of Education, the Honorable S. Oluwale Owakaya, and his parliamentary secretary, Mr. Kensington Momo, visited many places to ascertain the popularity of the scheme. And at Ibadan District School, Mokola, the Minister of Education himself taught the pupils a song. Children of all tribes in Nigeria, Hausas, Igbos, and Yorubas, whose parents have the required residential qualifications in the region also benefit, and the ministers must have been well satisfied by the many indications of early success. Uniforms are not compulsory, and at the Nawarudin School, Sabo, the Hausa settlement, Ibadan, admission of pupils in native dress is in full swing. The scene is typical of many places throughout the western region. Each child has his card, which bears a picture of the Premier as a precaution against wrongful admission. At the Ibadan District Council School, Mapo, Chief Fawolowo addresses parents and guardians. Some of them had brought their children to the wrong place, and he explains the plan of distribution carefully, pointing out that the school must not be more than three miles from the child's home. Unlike some of the newer ones, St. James's School, Okebola, Ibadan, is so well known that the children have no difficulty in finding it. All the buildings are not yet ready to house the many new pupils. Work is well underway at Okefoko, for instance, but in the meantime, the teaching is not delayed. Generous house owners, like Mr. J. O. Shobo, an Egba man, permit their houses to be used as schools. The Minister of Education had already said that in order to get the scheme going, he would allow classes to be held under trees, in churches and mosques, and in private dwelling houses. So, by the generosity of public-spirited people, the children can start learning immediately, and very keen they seem to be to get on with the job. When the Minister of Education went to UMC practicing school, Okeadu, he met two small pupils. One of them, none other than Tokumbo Obolowo, the Premier's daughter. Her sister, Ayodele, is also being educated here, and to judge by what Mr. Owokoya saw at mealtime, enjoying herself very much indeed. He asked me to be Minister of Education. He agreed to take me as Minister of Education, and I agreed. And we worked together for four solid years. Right. It was the most exciting period and an historic period because it is not often we uh, introduce universal primary education in the country. So I took the opportunity to read about precedents in various other countries and uh, 
who are prepared, we took some time to get approved. It was approved, and we carried on and introduced universal family education, which was successful and was praised not only in Nigeria but in other countries and international organizations. When the Action Group won the general elections in 1956, he was reappointed Premier. Its security dancers performed a dance which in olden days was staged only to celebrate the arrival of an important guest. The elaborate hairstyles of the women and their fabulous jewellery, which one wore gold, silver and coral to the value of not less than 500 pounds, certainly made their performance something to be remembered. Next day, the Parliament buildings were the focus of attention as ministers arrived for the presentation of the mace. Two members of the British Parliament were to offer it, Major Tufton Beamish and Mr. Hector Hughes, and there were guests from the other regions, the Federation and neighbouring countries. The Premier of the region arrived for the ceremony, followed soon afterwards by the Governor, Sir John Randy. The mace represents the authority of Parliament, though this ceremony, more than any other, is symbolic of the transfer of government in the Western region. The Speaker, Mr. R. Ade Doherty, took his place, and as occasion demands, bowed to the House. The delegation from the United Kingdom now entered. Major Tufton Beamish and Mr. Hughes had been chosen to represent the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, and their presence, as indeed this whole ceremony, was a token of the interest which the Mother of Parliament has in advancing the principles of democratic government in Western Nigeria. Mr. Speaker then welcomed the delegation, and the leader of the House, Chief Anthony Anaharo, moved a motion of thanks. The following motion. We, the members of the Western Nigeria House of Assembly, in Parliament assembled, express our thanks to the British Parliament for the formal presentation of a mace and the gift of a specially bound and autographed copy of Eskin May to this House through the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and we welcome this gesture as a token of the friendship and goodwill of the House of Commons towards this House and all the people of Western Nigeria. Uh, it is particularly fitting, and it may be regarded as propitious, that the mace, this symbol of our collective authority, should be brought into use at this great moment in Nigerian history when we have just become self-governing in the regional field. But uh, important as the mace is, we must not let its presence here for the first time completely suppress the value of the gift which we have just received. For if the mace proclaims your officer, it is as in May, which among other things applies the brakes, lest Mr. Speaker himself be tempted to exercise more than his due authority. To this extent, Asking May is to us here on the floor what the mace is to Mr. Speaker in the chair. It is therefore a singularly apt companion gift on this occasion. I beg to move. The leader of the opposition, Al Haji Adegoke Adelabu, seconded the motion. My pleasurable duty as the leader of this side of the house to second the motion which has been so ably moved by the leader of government business. Oh. This simple ceremony of the presentation of a maid and a copy of Atomnay's parliamentary practice by the United Kingdom branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association 
to the Western House of Assembly acquires the halo of a ritual because it is a spiritual endowment of the parliamentary tradition of which the British Commonwealth is the greatest living symbol. And finally, the Premier, Chief of Wallowa, spoke in support. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, it is a very great pleasure indeed that I uh, wish to add my voice to those of the um, leader of government business and the leader of opposition in their expression of very warm and deep gratitude to the British Parliament and to the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. I regard this as a great day in an epoch-making period in the life of this region. For today, we have here in our midst the symbol of the Speaker's authority and of the undoubted power and privileges of this House. It is most appropriate indeed that this symbol makes its appearance in this House shortly after our Parliament has become self-governing and independent in all matters between regional competence. The motion was passed unanimously. And with the ceremony over, Major Tufton Beamish and Mr. Hughes returned to their places. Soon they would be going home, but the mates would remain. The property of the house and of the people of the Western region. A thing to be cherished, not for its face value, but for the centuries of tradition and the ideals for which it stands. Afterwards, group photographs were taken. The guests, posing with the Western Region ministers and officials of the House, to provide a historic picture record of a memorable occasion. The Premier met the football visitors from Ghana. Kumasi Kotoko left before their match with the representative Western Region side, wearing stripes. Aniji spun the coin, and the game was on. And what a game it was. The Ghana team attacked right from the start. And after only 10 minutes were one goal up in spite of the fine work by the Western defense. The West fought back, first without success. The home side didn't get on equal terms until the beginning of the second half. Then it was one all, and the rest of the game was terrific. But no one broke through, and a 1-1 draw was, after all, a splendid result for a celebration game. From football to dance. The governor, Chief Awolowo, ministers and their wives attended the state ball in the Western Hall at Ogoji, the last official event of the celebration. There were two bands, these are the famous Cool Cats, but they weren't cool tonight and everybody does. There's Chief Inahuro and his wife, and Chief and Mrs. Wilson. The African Rhythm Brothers had been specially flown out from London to play at the ball. And every mile of the long journey was worthwhile, as the distinguished people present celebrated in time to their music. And still more and more people arrived. <laughs>